lots of little puppies show their insecurity differently. And as they get a little bit older, uh, their kind of hormones and maturity and things that, so if I show a, pu a puppy little might be just be kind of reserved or even a little bit avoidant, but not bark. And as they get older, they get a little more like, hey, assertive and so aggression, or somebody does things like that that taps that side of them. The other thing is dogs go through little d different developmental periods and it's different for every dog, it's different for every breed. They're like we, these are really hard to define, but there are dogs that are going along perfectly, everything looks great, they look super happy outgoing, and then they go through this period where they're scared of everything. And then if we go along and we just kind of stay, stay the course and do our training stuff the way we should, they come out on the other side and they're all better again and it goes away completely and you're com totally fine. And they call these fear periods, and some dogs experience them and others don't. They use the, a lot of the behaviors, the Scott and Fuller studies, they tried to define those fear periods. So they say there's one at eight weeks, there's one at six months, there's like these things. But I find that not necessarily to be the case, right? So some dog may be super fearful at nine or ten weeks, and then again at six or seven months, and some other dog may not ever go through those. Some dogs seem super fearful when they're little, little, and then it just goes away forever. Other dogs are, look perfect until they're a year old, and all of a sudden they have this, this weird thing. And part, part of it has to be the environment. There are experiences that the dogs are having that we're not aware of all the time. Again, remember, be, uh, behavior and, and personality is always an interplay of genetics and environment. And those things are always going on. Every moment of every day, your dog is learning things about its environment. And so there's going to be a whole host of um, experiences that we're not aware of the dog having. Um, and so that makes it saying like, hey, is this a fear period just for the dog? Is the dog just getting a little weird here and are they gonna grow out of it? Or was it this experience strictly that triggered it? Um, some, you leave your dog at home when you go to work, things like that, stuff happens. You know, if your dog's in the yard or your dog's somewhere like that, you know, God knows your neighbor walks, kid walks down the fence, dragging a stick along the fence, and <laughs> bang it. <laughs> you don't know that happened, who knows, right? Those kinds of things happen all the time. So. Um, and that's not an exact science. What I would say is, like, having that stuff happen sucks. It, it happens. Um, but our prescription for, is going to be the same. Our prescription is going to be to get the dog out around as many people that aren't going to do that to them as possible and kind of rearrange their brain about new experiences, dogs, people, whatever. And we want them to think that um, uh, uh, being around those things is good. Lots of good stuff happens. Counter conditioning, our classic counter conditioning stuff. And the more you do that, the better off you're going to be. Now, if they have bad experiences in those places, they're a setback. That's why we want to kind of avoid the bad experiences, letting the dog explode and having somebody else yank their dog away and drag it off, uh, somebody else going like coming at your dog or barking at your dog. Stop. People, like love, people love to kind of go stomp their feet at dogs and stuff like that. Like they're, they think they're playing and they freak the dog out completely, right? Those are all bad things with dogs that are edgy. Uh, and you can't rely on the general public to read signs well. So that means you've got to be kind of a step ahead of that stuff, right? But I would say for um, any puppy that's exhibiting uh, uh, like territorial barking, barking at strangers, barking at other dogs, barking at noises in the night, uh, it's not that the barking is bad. It's that it's a symptom of them being unsure and nervous about these things. And so that's telling me that this dog's natural uh, response to something that makes it nervous is partially aggressive. So instead of running and hiding under the bed, they're barking. Same impulse, same underlying cause. Response is different, right? So my golden retriever very rarely does that as a response to those things. It doesn't usually get out at the end of the leash, hackle up, and start barking at something. It's just not their thing. Not that there aren't goldens out there that do, but that's not a common response for them. They would more likely avoid. They would act submissive. They would try to get, go, run the other way. They would say, ooh, God, scary dog, and they'd go the other direction instead. Right? But it's all coming from the same place. And so that's something you file for yourself. You say, my dog's response to stress is a slightly aggressive response. So that means that down the road, if I'm not careful, that that dog's response to being stressed in some way could be biting somebody or another dog, right? And so now my job is to try to address the underlying causes of that and make the dog more confident so they don't feel they have to go there. It still doesn't mean that they're not going to bite when they feel stressed. It just means it's going to be harder. If we do our jobs right, it's going to be much harder to make them feel stressed in normal everyday circumstances. And that's what we want to avoid. Normal everyday things should not make you feel stressed. Somebody walking by you on the sidewalk 
another dog walking past in the parking lot. Those things are not things that you should be worried about. And generally, if your dog isn't crazy fearful, then uh, we can, in, in your puppies, like all of these dogs are, then you can make huge strides on that just by good proper socialization uh, and making sure that you're doing your counter conditioning work correctly in general. Right. Like a lot of those initial behaviors are always going to be when it first approaches too. So one of the best things you can do is when somebody comes into your house or when you go someplace with the dog is like if you and I were to meet on the street and we were doing it as a training op for your dog, I would come up and I would talk to you and I would completely ignore your dog. Right? I would walk straight up and I'd say, hey man, how's it going? And I would have a chat with you and I would not look at the dog, I wouldn't touch the dog, I wouldn't do anything. And that means the dog can be there like, who's this guy? I don't respond, nothing happens, I don't go away, he doesn't, he, the dog just says, oh, well, it's not for me. But if I come up and I go, hey, nice dog, and I look at your dog and walk towards you, now all my energy is going directly at your dog. And your dog, that a dog that's uncomfortable is not going to like that at all. 